Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasting Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I am joined, as always, by Rob Henderson. Hello. And I'm Brian Black. And today we are talking about camping outside, (laughs) sleeping outside. Just for whatever reason, you're sleeping outside. Yeah. And so we thought we'd talk about some of the things that we've used when we've slept outside and things we recommend, uh, ways that you can sleep outside if you're interested in that, Uh, talk about... We can talk about tents and ground pads and sleeping bags and everything in between, throw in some hammocks and, yeah. you know, mix it all up. So I guess just to kind of start the conversation, my progression of camping and sleeping outside has kind of dates back to being Boy Scouts as a kid mm-hmm. where, you know, I, I remember the first tent my dad and I got that we hung out overnight in a scout camp out when I was young and... I remember it completely sucked. The zipper broke when we were yep. on the camp out. Um, of course, we were in some little, you know, probably three or four man pop up kind of tent style thing that used to exist back in the eighties or whatever. And I'm sure there weren't a lot of options back there for yeah. a tent. So and imagine the quality. Yeah, I can't fault yeah. my dad too much for that. But um, as as kind of I progressed in my own life and kind of got outside and into nature myself and camped out. I would either sleep in a sleeping bag under the stars or mm-hmm. um, I would – I kind of that whole dome-style tent is what I have in my mind of what I used back in the day. So, so like that's stereotypical like, yeah, tent. stereotypical three, four-man tent. Yeah. Like that's what I started yeah. with when I first bought my own tent. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of progressed to wanting to venture further into the – into the outdoors and carry stuff with me and started getting into backpacking and things like that. And, um, really kind of the few years before I started ITS, I'm like, I took a backpacking class in college, which is crazy, but there were actually backpacking classes in college. That's where I met Kelly coincidentally. Nice. was in a backpacking class in college, but she had really no interest in other than earning a credit. And I was duped a little bit. She's coasting through. Anyway, the, Tents as a whole, kind of that kind of helped me progress into really wanting to find something lighter weight to mm-hmm. camp with, and that's kind of where I went down the rabbit hole. Um, I've always, I, I, I've been progressively getting lighter and lighter with backpacking, and yeah, because you don't want to carry that four man tent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you don't sucks. want a dome tent on your back, or I mean, if even you're if car you're camping, yeah, yeah, even if you're camping with multiple people, if you split that up, if you're backpacking, it's it's still heavy. Yeah. Um, I'll so take the rain fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and you'd be surprised that usually happens with even with lightweight tents sometimes. Yeah. If, like when we went on the uh, that Mammoth Sniper Challenge thing, JB and I split up the tent like that. So one person carried the fly and the poles, and then one person carried the the main the body, tent. yeah, oh, the tent better. itself. So we kind of distributed the weight like that. That's cool because we were multiple days, you know, with what we had in our backpacks. But regardless, I think there's you know you kind of hit it when you were just talking. There's a couple of different styles of camping. You oh, can yeah. either backpack there's lightweight backpacking there's ultra light backpacking yeah. there's super super duper ultra light backpacking or you just you know cut down a water bottle and yeah. i don't know fish out of the river you right? just wear I'm a like, loincloth yeah, right um, and then there's then there's car you know we've got car camping on the other extreme of that and then really glamping is kind of the, the just be all the, end the all. opposite yeah. spectrum because you can car camp and still kind of rough it a little bit but when you're glamping like that's I don't know. I define glamping as kind of the setup that everybody had this year at the muster conclave. At the conclave, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you know, I have. I mean, I have a little two person tent, mm-hmm. but the inside of my tent looked like someone's living room because it was just. <laughs> I mean, I had an air mattress. I had yeah. comforters and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> so it was like the most you can get away from ultralight backpacking. Yeah, I brought my Oz tent to that, and that's the thing Kelly and I got a few years ago at Overland after Overland Expo that we went and kind of checked them out and they're amazing. You can literally pop up the main frame in like 30 seconds and throw up some cots inside and it's but it is, amazing. It's such a solid looking tent. Yeah. Like I'm cool. surprised you didn't get like a property tax bill I know. from your tent no because shit. of how like yeah. structured it looked. 
yeah the that's exactly what it is I yeah mean, it's just it's almost like a it's not it's not huge in the extreme to where it's like a Taj Mahal or something. It's right. not, and that's my classification for like those huge tents that are like twelve man. Yes, what you will get at Walmart that comes yeah. in like the two man carry box. Well, there's so there's rooms. Right, that's what yeah. I mean. Like there's a there's an east wing, you have like and a, a west vestibule. Wing. Yeah, right. Step into my foyer. Yes, exactly. But it is pretty big tent, and it's yeah. it's a pain in the butt to store and carry. And I think it's probably I don't know lengthwise. I guess maybe twelve feet yeah. in length. Uh, for the bag that it comes in, and it's just it's just kind of a, a cool tent to carry around when you've got the room and the weight to carry something like that. And I think that's what it comes down to with sleeping outside. It's like there are levels of comfort. Sure. And I don't think anybody that does ultralight backpacking is arguing that that's the most comfortable way to sleep, because mm-hmm. it's not. I mean, yeah. at heart, you're sleeping on the ground, which always sucks. Yeah. So, like, the more you can do to put something between you and the ground the better and that's why like for the oz tent that's more of like a overlanding rig type Mm -hmm. hey we're traversing a country and i don't want to sleep on the ground yeah you know a month exactly and i like hammocks for that reason too yeah i've gotten into those a lot and that's actually what i used just the last time i went camping a couple months ago so the the hammock for me is it's not super comfortable so i haven't Mm -hmm. found a way yet that i can sleep in a hammock where i get a I guess, complete night sleep to where yeah. I don't wake up because I wake up in a hammock. If I'm in a cot or sometimes even on the ground in a sleeping bag, I won't wake up. It'll just be, I'll sleep through the night, which is Interesting. great. Interesting. But I wonder if it's movement or well, something. Well, so it may be movement and it may be just being on edge more because yeah. I'm more exposed to the elements. I don't know what it is. But uh, I take that back though because I've slept under the stars in a sleeping bag without that sure. happening. So I'm wondering I'm if not it's sure. the curve it might be. that it, your body yeah. gets put under, something like that. Yeah, hmm. but... And also, I still have not a found, or fa- not a found, not not found a way to completely stay warm in a hammock. Oh, yeah. Now I know there's, um, you know, down. What do you call them? I guess blankets is what you call it, like yeah. a down blanket that you put underneath like it. Insulating layer. Yeah, like insulation. And still then, though. Yeah, and I've tried putting my ground pad in my sleeping bag and then mm-hmm. sleeping on top of that. And then, yep. However, ground pads are great because they're on the ground. Like that's right. what, that's what makes it's a ground the- pad. Ground Turns out pad. the ground is yeah. super insulating. Right, you know exactly. when you put a ground pad on. Yes, um, and coincidentally, you can just pile up a bunch of leaves too and get that same kind of, you know, ground heat retention too. That's my plan. Yeah, for our forty-eight hour challenge, <laughs> right. pile up a bunch of leaves. <laughs> exactly, but you know, they, uh, it all comes down to personal preference and finding out what works for you. And I've I've accumulated quite a few tents yeah. in the years that I've been doing ITS, and I think. The first tent that Kelly and I got before ITS that we, you know, I finally convinced her to go camping. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think my sister's got that now, but it was kind of like a, if I remember correctly, it was like an LL Bean tent or something like that. Nice. And it was that same style, yep. you know, dome type, bigger tent. Um, I th- actually think we used it at the very first muster. I'm not sure though. But oh, okay. Anyway, that's no longer with us, and we've progressed to the Oz tent for, you know, when we're camping together mm-hmm. because we both really love sleeping on a cot when we have the opportunity to. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at personally when I'm camping with Kelly. However, when I'm not camping with Kelly, that's when I kind of get to do what I want and yeah. experiment with not sleeping all night right. and they junk like that. So That's it's, when I like to sleep crappy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually what it comes yeah. down to, believe, <laughs> believe it or not. Um so that's why I've been experimenting with different hammock things. And, mm-hmm. you know, some nights I'll, I'll try the ground pad thing. I just, I haven't come across the best system for hammocks yet. And yeah. I have a great hammock. It's so the Eno nest is what I have. And I've even got the double nest because I thought, okay, so if I, maybe if I move to the double size hammock, meaning more width, it would be more comfortable to sleep in. And uh. actually what happens is more material just piles up around me. So I have less visibility. You know what I mean? So as it turns out, yeah. you're more unaware of what's going on. <laughs> right. Uh, I think it might be a little longer too, but it doesn't make a difference to me. Huh. Um, okay. So anyway, and plus, I always run into the conundrum of like how to, how to, I guess take things out of my pockets and you know you know where to put things. So I usually have a backpack and I'll hang a backpack in a tree too. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll put stuff in there. But there's some things that I don't want to leave in a backpack that someone can just grab off a tree while I'm sleeping. Um, So I found that what really works good is the Eno hammocks have these 
carabiners at the end of each end of the actual hammock body, and you clip those into the straps that wrap around the trees. So it's a it's a pretty cool system to mm-hmm. put up, and it's very fast and efficient. And I use I've started tying my bootlaces together in like a square knot and hanging them from one of those carabiners. Oh, cool! Because I don't like putting Should my boots, boots on the ground. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And I don't like hanging them off a backpack. I get nerved out about things like coming up out of the trees and getting into my sh- my stuff for some reason. I don't know why. Um, probably because we were on this one scout camp out when Trey was in scouts and I was a assistant scout master and we were camping and we were at this site where literally roaches were flying and dropping out of trees on us. And no. like, like that was, uh-uh. no. that was like the moment I went, you know what? Uh, I'm going to move my stuff. And yeah. luckily I wasn't camping in a hammock that time, but oh man, yeah, oh, oh. that was bad. No, thank yeah. you. It's like uh, kamikaze roaches from the trees, and yeah, Ew. it was bad. Gross. Anyway, but that's kind of my evolution with the hammock. I, I'd love to hear people's commentary out there on what they found mm-hmm. is great for hammocks, too, because I need some advice on that. I've, I've done some research online, and I see a lot of different things on that, and I've tried putting a, um, I guess, kind of like a rain fly over the hammock. Mention, I've seen a yep. couple that have those. I've tried that. I've tried doing the rain fly and a bug net, yeah. you know, and it's just, I don't know. The whole system together is just a whole lot, and it it just seems kind of counterintuitive to me of, like, sleeping in a hammock when you have to yeah. put a rain fly and stake it out and put a net on and At that point, ground you're just, pat- it's, it's like, a tent in the sky. I know, like, and that's at that point, it's like, why not just get a tent? But, yeah. I mean, I understand. There's, there's a level of comfort from sleeping above the ground like that, but... Sure. I don't know. I guess I haven't found the perfect system yet. Well, and I guess my big hang up on it is, um, I guess, like animals access to me. Mm-hmm. But then when I think about it, I mean, there's not, it's not like a tent wall <laughs> is going to stop something from coming in. I think you know? that's the I think that's the first um, visual I got the first night I ever camped in the or yeah, camped in a hammock was some raccoon like. Yeah. Sc- scratching my back up like or like in getting in with night. you <laughs> and like curling up i didn't picture that Ooh. but yeah <laughs> yeah nothing but i always worry about like hogs and stuff yeah you know, walking underneath right. you know right man, i whatever. thought about that too <laughs> cut this open and get a snack right <laughs> it's like a pinata <laughs> right yeah because i mean we've heard them a couple times at musters and stuff uh-huh. uh, wrestling around yeah and i just always think like oh man i don't i don't know why but it just seems less secure mm-hmm. than a tent even though like i said tent fabric is not yeah known for its strength i agree so in terms of tents like just to kind of throw out some things that i've used um i like kind of coming back to these nemo tents that i have because they're mm-hmm. super lightweight and i've they're and i and granted i have not shopped for tents in probably three years so don't quote me on like the latest and greatest and lightweight tent yeah. technology but i feel that the GoGo LE, which they have some weird names um, for Nemo, but that is like a bivy style tent. And then there's the OB, OB12P or something like that. And yeah, it sounds like OB12P. Your only home. hope. Yeah. <laughs> Your only hope tent. But there's that one too, which is more of a, a two person tent with it's got a kind of a internal pole system with it. Whereas the GoGo LE has an inflatable beam that kind of spans okay. the, the bivy. So both are really cool. Um, obviously, one's a one person and one's a, a two person, which it's a pretty tight. Two, I was going to say when they say fit. two people, is yeah. it like? I mean, honestly, two, two people that know each other. Yeah, well? and that's and that's the thing about tents too. And hopefully, those that have camped kind of realize this. But a three to four man tent is probably going to sleep too comfortably. Yeah, you know. So take that with a grain of salt on their rating. Same with temperature ratings on sleeping bags. Take that with a grain of salt too, and we'll get into that in a second. But. The, those are kind of two of the, the more modern, lightweight tents that I've used. And I like the GoGo LE because it can fit down into something that, I don't know what I'd describe it, maybe like two Nalgene's or something like that in terms of space that it takes up. Uh, maybe a little shorter than two Nalgene's, but probably the width. Like a loaf of bread? Uh, that measurement has gone out yeah, the window because it depends on that's what probably pretty of, good. Like a ciabatta. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say a loaf of bread is probably a good observation. Maybe maybe a little smaller. That's a pretty good yeah. footprint, though. Yeah, and that's what I've tried to do is to 
get stuff that could fit into like a three day pack. So if you can imagine kind of the three day pack standard, mm-hmm. um, I think it's God was it twenty seven cubic inches or something twenty seven hundred cubic inches for like a three day style pack. I'm not That's, sure. That sounds super right yeah. and scientific. Yeah. So yeah, we're so, gonna go with that twenty seven hundred cubic. Inches. I'm not. I'm not really up to speed on my cubic inches, so I could be totally messing that up. But um, anyway, I like. I like the fact that I can put all that stuff into like a, let's just say GR1. So like a GR1 mm-hmm. style backpack, I could fit that Nemo GoGo LE tent. I could fit my sleeping bag. That's a down sleeping bag. That's kind of my, my everyday or mm-hmm. normal carry type sleeping bag. And then I can fit a ground pad and what else? That's, that's kind of the, you know, the, the tent loadout, so to speak. You got a ground pad, sleeping bag and, you know, tent. And I can fit all that in comfortably and still have room for other stuff like food and things like that. So with that is a big deal. Yeah. Kind of keeping that in mind, like that's what I try to shoot for. Of course, I'm not going to carry a, um, you know, a GR1 or GR2 or something like that from Go Ruck on a lightweight backpacking trip. It's definitely. But you could. Yeah, you could. It's just you have a lot of weight in the pack because of that thousand D Cordura that it's made with. That's really dense, heavy material, very bomb proof. But at the same time it's very heavy in Not terms of a pack. Yeah. yeah. So there's another backpacking pack that I have. It's, um, something, something 50. I can't remember what they stopped making them. You've shown it before and I have it in yeah, my, yeah, it'll come to I me. Can picture it in my but mind. anyway, so, you know, when it comes to that, I've, I've tried to kind of go lightweight with tent selection. Um, Obviously, I, I kind of have a wide gamut of things to choose from. Sure. You know, doing what we do with gear has kind of afforded me the luxury of having a lot of stuff to pick from. So, uh-huh. you know, I can grab a hammock if I need to. I can go all the way up to the um, the Oz tent size if I needed to or something down to like a two or three man tent if I needed to as well or something bivy style. So Yeah. Do you know if you can still rent? Uh, tents and stuff from REI. I don't know. I didn't because know because I know that I know they thing. used to do that because I've heard from several people really? like don't make the commitment. That's until a great. That's tried a, great a couple thing. things. Yeah. So I don't know if they still do that, but it might be worth looking into for somebody that doesn't know if they'd prefer well, a yeah you know a tent or a one person or two person. Next or, time I'm an REI, I'm going to ask them that because I'm yeah. cur- I'm curious now. Not that I would do that, but I'd like to report back on. Well, and it kind of solves the, like you said, being able to select. If you Mm -hmm. know what you like and you're more comfortable, like some people are like, I'm always going to have a tent. Mm -hmm. So like you know that you can make that investment because they can be a little pricey too. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that still buy the the Walmart two-person tents Mm -hmm. and they're just, they just don't hold up that well. I also, just kind of an aside, I like hammocks too because they provide a very easy to store solution for sleeping. Mm -hmm. So meaning you can put them in a vehicle and forget about them. So, you know, you can have a hammock in there. Maybe, maybe you've got some really warm clothing and a blanket and stuff like that. And you could throw that up in a pinch and, you know, sleep somewhere if, you know, obviously you could sleep in your car too, but that's not always the most comfortable thing. But yeah. So, and then. I guess kind of getting into the whole sleeping bag ground pad thing. That's kind of where I'd like to move next. Um, unless you have tent suggestions that you. So I, I did the with. Walmart uh, crappy tent yeah. for a long time uh, and it just fell apart. Yeah. Um, and then I had actually picked up an REI tent. I can't remember the uh, name, but it's not a great quality, but it's got like a, a solid tub mm-hmm. and it's a higher tub, which are is the nice. Seam sealed on it. They are. Yeah. Um, but That's something we didn't talk about. So well, and I picked it up at their garage sale mm-hmm. with my little discount coat, and it was like thirty dollars, <laughs> so I couldn't beat that. Yeah, that's good. But I've looked into the Nemo, and then whenever this tent mm-hmm. gives it up, I think I'll probably head to that. They're just such good quality. Well, a couple of things to look for if I'm gonna kind of get on that bandwagon with tents. You mm-hmm. want something that's got a solid tub, which you know Rob mentioned tub, and what that means is that. There's probably a good inch and a half that's a solid piece of material running all the way around the tent. So meaning like an inch and a half, two inches high up off the ground. So meaning the bottom of your tent comes up and folds along the sides and that's kind of a solid piece. Meaning even the internal places where they had to sew a seam together are mm-hmm. sealed. Meaning there's a there's like a rubberized plastic yeah, Almost, it's like a coating. Yeah, it's like a clear coating that they put over the seam. And what that does is it prevents water from leaking into the tent via those little holes that the needle makes when they sew it together. Um, and you wouldn't believe that you could get water in from there, but you really It totally can. makes sense when yeah. you think about it, especially like standing water. Yeah. So when you buy a tent, you need to either check to make sure it has sealed seams or you need to buy a bunch of seam sealer and do it yourself, which is a horrible job. Yeah. I did that one time, and I've... 
never forgot it. It's like I mean, it's just it was so painful that I went, oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. And I was trying to save like a hundred bucks or right. something, you know, in a tent. And is I probably the labor. Yeah, I spent tons of time, hours of time, yeah, sealing a tent and. You know, after a couple of months, I noticed some of my seams peeling up, too. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. But anyway. Save time. Yes. And money. Take my advice. Get buy a seam sealed, sealed tent. Spend a little more money. You know, put it on a credit card if you have to and make payments. But just don't incur the labor of sealing seams. It's not worth it. Trust me. <laughs> there are so many people upset right now. <laughs> I know. The seam sealer company is like, ah! Anyway. So on to, like, sleeping bags and ground pads. There's a bunch of different style ground pads, and we should probably hit that first because it's a quick talk. So you can either buy an inflatable style ground pad, or you can buy kind of a, a solid material ground pad. And I'm sure there's a better technical term for that, but yeah, um, kind of a, a, what is it, like a high-density foam or solid-density foam? I don't know what you'd call that. Yeah, some sort of foam, but it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not like egg crate foam. It's right. more of like a, I don't know chemical type thing Mm -hmm. so it's definitely thinner yeah uh, and more solid it is foam that's what it is yeah so um there's a company called thermarest that makes kind of all different styles of what we just talked about they make inflatable ones um that are full size you know meaning that a standard or rate some most most stuff comes in like regular and tall yeah so you can buy sleeping bags that way you can buy ground pads that way and then some companies make a short ground pad which is like a cut down version that's lightweight um, that's not protected past like where your knees are to your feet. So that to me, you lose a lot of heat out of your feet. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. That's you, actually I can what take I, that or leave so it, I bought the tall mm-hmm. and I turn it into the short by folding it over on itself. Mm-hmm. So I get double padding and then I don't have anything mm. on my calves and it does get a little cold, yeah. but you get double the cushioning mm. that you're sleeping on, which you like is like a cushy. I do ground pad. <laughs> as cushy as I can get it. So the thing about the inflatable ones is they're very comfortable to sleep on. However, the downside is it could spring a leak. Yeah. You know, it could get a hole. So you got to carry a repair kit or a patch kit with you just in case. Um, and then it's more heavy. So mm-hmm. when you deflate it and roll it up, they're traditionally more heavy than some of the um, the foam ground pads. So mm-hmm. Thermarest also makes a, a very popular ground pad called a Ridge Rest. I like that one a whole lot. Yep. It's a roll up style. Um, versus the Z fold of something called their Z light. Mm-hmm. I think it's called Z light, and it looks like the egg crate style, um, kind of foam. And then the ridge rest is kind of it has ridges in it, kind yeah. of like lines. So that to, that is actually lighter than the Z light, believe it or not. So that accordion style is cool because it you know it does kind of compress better and fit certain places better. However, I think the Ridge rest is more insulative. It's got a better R value, and that's kind of a, a metric that ground pads use is there's an R rating. So the higher the the R rating, the more insulative it is mm-hmm. um, from the ground. So, And then they make a version of a ridge rest with like a silver lining um, on the bottom, so it actually helps hold thermal heat in better. So there's a, there's a version of that too. But I like that. It's very lightweight. It's, it's comfortable. It's... I don't know, easy to clean. Yeah. And I and I like the fact that I don't have to worry about inflating it or right. carry a patch kit. So I don't know. That's my that's my preference for a yeah. ground pad, and I've used quite a lot of them. Um, I've used those short ones. I've used the ones that are kind of skeletonized when you inflate them, and those just have a horrendous... They don't even publish an R value because they're just non-insulative. It's, I mean, just, it's like you took the worst things of yeah. ground pads and you yeah. combined them. Yeah, I mean, it's super lightweight, sure. but at the same time, there's no insulation, so it's like, why yeah. are you even using that? So yeah. It's more of, obviously, a warm weather type ground pad. <laughs> You're more using it for the cushion than the um, insulative properties. Right. So that's kind of that's kind of the, the gist of what ground pads afford. Um, again, you can get short ones that try to save weight by, you know, cutting them down. You can actually cut your own ground pad down too. So like I did that with the Z-Lite, that accordion style egg crate one trim that Thermorous makes. Yeah. I actually trimmed some of it off and tried to attempt to save weight and it was just horrible. So it's not that I cut too much off. I just can't stand not having insulation on my legs and feet. Mm-hmm. So my feet just get horrendously cold yeah. at night. And even if I try to wear two pairs of socks or something, yeah. I still freeze my butt off. I'm going to get cold so. feet no matter yeah, what. exactly. So, I mean, you can always try the trick of, like, 
boiling water, putting it in an algae, and throwing it at the bottom of your sleeping bag. But I'm always skeptical about a leaky algae. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. check the seal on an algae. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that is a trick. Um, also, sure. you know, just sleeping with a, a an algae full of boiling water on your chest can help keep you warm, too. So You can get those uh, disposable hand warmers, too. Yeah, but those I'm always, are only so good. And I'm always afraid of, like, chemical burns and stuff. <laughs> I'm not afraid of those. I, I'm afraid of carrying the weight that it would take to have s- enough of those yeah. to make me warm the whole time. You get one and night of yeah, warm Yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I could, I could leave those. Yeah. I mean, I've tried to use them before, and I just can't. The hot hands things, I can't get into them. So what do you do for a pillow? So I actually have a pillow from Nemo that I like a lot that's mm-hmm. an inflatable pillow. That's the Philo, right? Yeah. Okay. But on the lightweight side, I've used Ziploc bags in a... <laughs> Tyvek type stuff sack. Just filled with air? Yeah, so you have to kind of like double them up. So I take the gallon size Ziplocs and I'll mm-hmm. put two of them. So I'll put the seal, like I'll, I'll blow up a Ziploc with air mm-hmm. and I'll put that into another gallon Ziploc and reverse where the seal line is. So like that'll go into the bottom of the other Ziploc and then I'll blow the other one up. That's a good idea. Um, and then, well, some, usually I don't blow the second one up. I just kind of seal that, sure. that aired up one in there. And then I put that inside a Tyvek stuff sack and you know, close the drawstring and that's my pillow. Nice. Um, I've found that that works okay. I mean, sometimes depending on how much I toss and turn, I'll deflate it. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's a great lightweight option. However, I like that Nemo Philo pillow a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's what it's called. F I L L O or whatever. Um, that's, that's a pretty good pillow. It's just heavy Yeah. for a pillow. That's true. Um, actually, you know what? I've, I came across that other one not too long ago. I forgot all about Cedar it. Sea to Summit, yes, isn't it? Yes, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. I found that in REI probably like two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, something yeah, like we, that. I think we put it on yeah, the gear station. We we'll did. look up the name yeah, and put yeah. it in there. That was a good one, too. Super lightweight and inflatable, and it's got, I think it has a double valve on it, too. So when you inflate it, it the air doesn't come back out. You know, you like blow oh, into that's it nice. and inflate it. Yeah. yeah. Not like your standard yeah. children's and toy. Yeah. And then it's got like a secondary valve that you open and air, all the air comes out. So it's a really quick deflate. That's convenient. Yeah pretty neat nice yeah i'll make sure we link to that in the uh episode intel too that's cool but yeah that's uh that's kind of the gamut of ground pads do you own a ground pad i do i have the thermo rest the, the, i have the ridge inflatable rest. one uh not inflatable oh. i have the ridge rest just the foam when it gotcha. rolls up and i have the big one mm-hmm. um oh yeah you said that you have the tall yeah right. and then i i'd fold it i don't fold it in half i fold it in like three quarters because mm-hmm. like i'll usually i use a pack for a pillow mm-hmm. uh i take a i still don't know how to say it. it's the scarf that people wear. Shimog. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I take that and I like the wrap, I wrap the pack in it. Okay. And then I just lay my head on that. Yeah. Because usually I'll have a pack that has uh, cushions on the back. Mm-hmm. So I just use those cushions. And so it offsets kind of the doubled up ground pad, which is nice. I mean, it's not comfortable, but it works. I've done that before too. I've taken that Tyvek stuff sack and I've just put, you know, clothing. Like, yeah. Like if you got cold, extra clothing, clothing and stuff. Clothing in yep. there and I'll sleep on that. I actually... That was an article in ITS way back in the day. We were taking old U.S. Postal Service Tyvek yeah. envelopes, turning them inside out, sewing a drawstring into them, and making a little stuff sack. So we should link to that article, too. That's yeah. a cool little DIY That's project. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I've been using that same stuff sack. I literally sewed it together with dental floss and a needle, put some paracord in and a drawstring, and I think that thing has held up for... That Tyvek is yeah, extremely tough At material. least six years. I've yeah. had it at least six years now. So it's pretty good. Um, and then moving on to sleeping bags. You know, we kind of had that caveat earlier about the rating. Don't trust that temperature rating that's on a sleeping bag. Always <laughs> always undercut that. So if it's a, you know, 32 degree bag, expect to, you know, sleep in... F- 45 to 50 degree weather Well, because the rating is like you will be alive yes like so <laughs> yeah 32 exactly. degrees in 32 degrees is you are yeah. not going to be comfortable you'll be shivering all night yes. but you will be alive you, it will keep you alive <laughs> so like f- like you said 40 to 50 is a better yeah you know so if you're first of all i don't know why you're sleeping in 32 degrees but if you are you should probably go for like a zero degree bag or something like that well i did that i should have gone with a zero degree bag i was i didn't know it was gonna get down that cold that one time at mammoth but we were in like negative six or eight or two. There's or, no way it to was make negative. that not suck. It was negative. Whatever it was, it was too cold. So. That's where you want to just sleep on the fire. Yeah. Just <laughs> so. Yeah, and I was so cold that I did eventually get out of the tent. Um, I got a little claustrophobic, which is, you know, 
because we were in this super small two man tent. Two man tent. I was like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. But anyway, I couldn't sleep either sure. because I was super cold. So I wound up just sleeping by the fire that night, um, and tr- tried to just hope I didn't burn my sleeping bag. Yeah. It didn't, but yeah, that was a uh, that Kinda was a very very cold night. Yeah, those are not good sleeps. <laughs> yeah, I've got a I've got a Mountain Hardware thirty two like a Phantom thirty two I think is what the bag. So I don't know if mm-hmm. they make it anymore, but I've had it forever. It's a down bag. And down's very insulative. The problem with down is that if it gets wet, it's just screwed. Yeah. So once you get down feathers wet that are in a bag, you're just it takes forever to dry out. You're you're probably not gonna. Yeah. You're just gonna be miserable. You got a wet bag yeah, for a trip. It's horrible. <laughs> so that's why synthetic fabrics are a little bit better. Like like a synthetic down sure. that can dry easier is is great. Um, I know they're making sleeping bags now with material that. The water won't penetrate, but it's still got like a down in it. So oh, it's like, interesting. you know, you could sleep outside with it. So it's like sealed yeah, down. Yeah, huh, exactly. That's a good idea. Yeah, so the material's sealed. <laughs> but anyway, that's kind of, those are kind of some options for sleeping bags. You know, obviously look at the, the thermal rating of a sleeping bag and take that with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Um, and just get something that's comfortable. You know, again, sleeping bags come in regular size and short or, yeah, regular size and long. I think women's have variations as well, but yeah, I mean, definitely what's great about places like REI is you can actually go get inside a sleeping bag and try it out. So they'll let you do that. Without being asked to leave. Yeah. I mean, that's why they have them hanging there. So it's not just to look at. They're literally to take down and climb inside it and make sure it fits you well because... I like that Phantom 32 bag a whole lot, but the zipper's on the wrong side for me. Well, and that's the thing is like yeah. operate the zippers and, yeah. and do all the things that you would normally do, you know, yeah. bunch up, sit up, all that kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. that, that's another great thing about when you were talking about the Oz tent. I, nothing beats a tent you can stand up in. Yeah. <laughs> because if no you kidding. get these little two-person tents, you just have to realize that you're not ever going to be able to stand up in it. Mm-hmm. And that, that's a big morale boost when you can stand up and change clothes and stuff. <laughs> I agree. And that's, I would love to make sure I have that every time I go camping, but yeah. it's not always reality. Right. But yeah. So that's, uh, that's what sleeping, sleeping outside, sleeping outside. All right. Thanks for listening to gear tasting radio. Remember if you have questions, use the pound tag gear tasting on a social media network. We will find them and get them answered here on the show. Eventually we'll do another question and answer episode pretty soon. We've already got some, we're stacking up for it. Um, remember to subscribe on Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star rating. It really helps get our show out and let new people see it. Apple gives preference to podcasts that have really good ratings and allow us to kind of keep growing the show. So we'd very much appreciate your rating and review. If, uh, you know, if you've got something that um, you'd like to leave us as far as feedback, we'd love to hear that too. So you can even email that into us, email support at itsactual.com. Um, and if you are consider or considering kind of helping to support the show, which we would love, uh, we have a Patreon channel. So patreon.com slash ITS tactical, allow us to kind of give you back something in return for your patronage there. You can check it all out there and thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.